<laughs> I'm gonna be like my granddaddy one day. I want the best wine. I'm gonna sing this song. It goes like this. Listen. Man, for the word of God says, if you receive the one I send, you receive me. Amen. So we want to give him this opportunity. With your support, we believe God will use him in a very special way. Come on, let us stand at this time and receive none other than Brother Jeremy Matthews. Jesus, 
wedding celebrations could last for over a week. Food, drink, and entertainment had to be provided for all the guests by the bridegroom. A wedding was an opportunity for the families to show their generosity. It would be a disgrace if there was not plenty throughout the time of the celebration. That what was happening at the celebration where Jesus, his disciple, and his mother were attending. While at the wedding, a problem occurred in which the wine ran out. Mary had to have been a part of this planning committee of this wedding because when she found out that the wine had run out, she instantly turned to Jesus and told him, something has to be done. Mm -hmm. Thus, the wonderful miracle of Jesus turning water into wine occurred. Serving the best of everything at the first of the celebration was the normal thing to do. But when the wine Jesus provided was served, Everyone was amazed for it was far better than that was served at the first. And so the comment, but you have kept the good wine until now, was heard. My brothers and sisters, what can we learn from this miracle today? This brings me to my first, my point, the dilemma. As you all know, a dilemma did occur because there was a wine shortage. Verse 3 says, when the wine ran out, Jesus' mother said to him, they have no more wine. Back in the time of the Greeks, wine was used for several things. Just to name a few, the wine was used as a filtration component to help the low quality water to become drinkable and to keep others from getting sick by drinking it. It was also used as an anesthetic to ease numbness and also to clean wounds. At this event we speak of today, the wine was considered a symbolized joy to the guests that were attending. This was a very big thing. The running out of the wine could be a very embarrassing moment for the bride and the groom, which would lead to public shame and disappointment. Mary found herself in a similar dilemma that she could not resolve on her own, which could lead to a major disaster. After finding herself in an uncomfortable situation, she went to who she knew would resolve the problem. She was confident in Jesus that the problem would be taken care of, which brings me to point two, the demand. Now, I'm going to park right here for, for a second because it was a lot that I pulled from this. Verses three and five, when the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, they have no more wine. Verse 4 says, Woman, why do you involve me? Which was Jesus' reply. My hour has not yet to come. Verse 5, His mother said unto the servants, Whatsoever he said unto you, do it. It was a couple of things that, that just popped out when I was reading this. First, he calls his mother woman, which was not the familiar Mary or even mother. But he addresses her with a term that you use for someone that you don't very don't know very well. Now, I know if I address my mom at woman, I need to be looking to my left or my right because something coming behind me. <laughs> she wants to be acknowledged as mother. <laughs> I don't know about y'all, but I'm pretty sure some of y'all mamas do the same thing. <laughs> um, excuse me says, not the familiar Mary or even mother, but he addresses her with a term that you use for someone you don't know well, even someone you've just met. He's taking a distance from Mary and her earthly anxieties. Woman, what does your concern have to do with me? Second, his answer sounds a bit rough, as one of the translations put it, woman, that is not our problem. It's not rude, but emphatic. Jesus doesn't want to get involved with this little crisis, he explained. My hour has not yet to come. In John's gospel, the hour is a phrase loaded with meaning, for it refers to the time of the death of Jesus. For example, in John 12, just after Jesus had entered Jerusalem for the last time, he announces, the hour has come that the Son of Man shall be glorified. The hour was the appointed time the high point of his work, 
when he's when he when by his blood he would cleanse sinners. But that hour has not come yet. Jesus was sent to earth to rescue people. Jesus wasn't sent to earth to rescue people from social embarrassment or saving wedding parties or failure. All right. He had his eyes on a far on far greater things, more spectacular wonders, <clears throat> excuse right. me, like offering himself up as the Lamb of God. All right. All right. Now there were other disciples at the celebration with Jesus. Mm -hmm. There were Andrew, Philip, Simon, Peter, and Nathaniel. But in the midst of this wine shortage, Mary didn't hesitate to turn to either one. She turned to Jesus. Neither one of the disciples could resolve this dilemma that arose. And Mary knew that. She knew that Jesus was the only one who could fix it. Now, in verse 5, Mary says, The servants, whatsoever he said unto them, do it. How did Mary know that Jesus would fix this problem? That's a question that we ask. But if you turn into the book of Luke, chapter 1, verses 26 through 33, it says that God sent Gabriel to find a virgin named Mary. When Mary was received by Gabriel, Gabriel first told her that she had favor and God was with him. Secondly, he told her, Gabriel told her that she was going to conceive the Messiah and name him the Son of God, which is Jesus. So if you want to know why did Mary just turn to Jesus, that was your response. She knew who Jesus was. She knew what he would bring. She knew what he could do. So that's why she turned to Jesus instead of the other disciples that were with him. Gabriel, oh, I'm sorry. <clears throat> Excuse me. The shoulders of God are big and strong enough to carry all of our burdens. Now, there's a question that I will also ask today. Now, if Mary knew who Jesus was and what he could do, and we are believers of the word, and we know the power, and we witness manifestation of God, my question is, why is it when your burdens get so hard that you can't seem to bear them, that you turn to anything and everything except turning to God? I don't think y'all heard me. <laughs> Let me say it one more time. Why is it when your burdens get so hard that you can't bear them, you turn to everything and everybody else except God? Absolutely ain't going to fix it. Jack Daniels won't fix it. The funny cigarettes, or as they say in the old days, Mary Jane won't fix it. The, the colorful pills won't fix it. All they're going to do is make your matters even worse and bring more burdens on you. My sister and brother, God loves you, and he's waiting on you to turn to him in your, your problems with your needs. Because he states, in your weakness, his power is made strong. For when you have burdens that you can't bear on your own, you have the Savior to turn to. <clears throat> this brings me to my final point which is the delivery. Now, we see we had the dilemma, which was the shortage of wine. We've had the man, which Jesus, Mary told Jesus, hey, we, we have no wine. She's basically telling him he need to fix the problem. But now we have the delivery, the response of Jesus. Verses six and eight says, nearby stood six stone water jars the kind used by the Jews for ceremonial washing, each holding for 20 to 30 gallons. Verse 7 says, Jesus said to the servants, fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. Verses 8, then he told them, now draw some out and take it to the master of the banquet. Philippians 4, 19 says, and my God will supply all of my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Now, we know that God will supply all our needs, but it's a catch to that. He'll supply when you participate. He will deliver in your participation. So it's not just a one part, it's a two part situation. God provides when you participate. 
Now, if you see in the text, Mary told Jesus of the problem. So she put the problem on Jesus. So after Jesus took the problem, he gave the servants a job to do. So we know that there was a wine shortage and we need some wine replenished. So what was the process? Now, all of you all know that the process of creating wine is a process, a pretty long process. And during this time, they didn't have the, the tools that we have now to replenish wine instantly. Remember, we had a wedding here. <laughs> so nobody had the equipment that was needed to bring forth some more wine. So, so now we're going to see how the power is manifested in your obedience of you participating. Well, the servants had to go and find water. It said that there were six clay jars just along the side. So he told them to go. That's an action. He, he said go and fill them with water. So they didn't just have to go. They had to go put in some work. And when they filled the clay pots with water, it says, now draw some out and take it to the master, Amen. which is the head table to taste the wine. Now, these servants saw that it was water that they put in these clay pots, but we needed wine. <laughs> Y'all see the problem? If I take him water, what could happen to me? That could be uh, an embarrassment of myself and also cause punishment to me. So here's where the power came. Even though they knew that it was water, they still was obedient to God's Jesus request. Sometimes in life, it'll be times where God tells you to do something and you don't know how it's going to get done. He's telling you to just do what he said. The power comes in your doing and your obedience of what he's instructed to you to do. So as the servants drew from the water to take to the head table, the power was in their obedience as they walked into the servant. He's telling us this. God knows everything and what's best for us. But he said, I know the plans that I have for you. He didn't just say he know the plans. He's told us what was in the plans. He wants to prosper us, to give us long life and a hope for it for when he comes. Now, that's a lot for me to know that I'm in his plan, but he also wants me to prosper in his plan. That's a big thing, because we may get a job and we hope for something, but that job don't turn out right. We may get into a relationship and think that the relationship is right, but it don't turn out right. Well, God has promised us that in his plan, if we stick to his plan and be obedient to his plan, that we will prosper. He said we will prosper. He, he already laid it out for us. He created the earth and thereof for us. And he gave it to us to prosper. Now, now sometimes I, I'll say this. Sometimes I'll say this. Some things that you do in life is your fault. <laughs> it's not the devil, it's you. <laughs> See, we, we can't put it on the devil or sin because Jesus paid at the cross. <laughs> See, it's simply your unbelief. You can't say sin made you do that because the price been paid for sin. Hmm? That, that's, that's called disobedience. That's called disobedience. See, see, when you're obedient with the will of God, prosperity comes automatically. Have you just went somewhere you, did, you didn't have and all of a sudden somebody came and said, here, God, well, he's going to bless you for it. That, that's called obedience. When you're doing what thus said the Lord. Hmm? God, God is an amazing God. God is not just a little God. God is everywhere and everything at all times. He can take care of you here at church. He can take care of somebody in China or a whole other country. He can take care of all of us at the same time. But we must participate in order for his power to be manifested in us. Now, that, that brings me to my closing I told you I wasn't going to be here long. But as we know, God sent some great prophets before Jesus. 
You do remember Jeremiah, right? You do remember Ezekiel, right? What about Malachi or David? These were great prophets. But the problem with these prophets is they did some great work and that made major impact, but neither one of them can fulfill the mission that Jesus had to come on. Changing the, and Jesus had performed some great works as well. I said some great works. You do know the changing in the water, the wine is what I'm explaining to you now. The healing of the royal official's son, the healing of the paralyzed man at the pool of Bethesda, the feeding of 5,000 hungry soldiers fed, the walking on water, the healing of the man that was born blind, and the raising Lazarus from the dead. Now, those were some great work that he done, but that wasn't the greatest work that he done. For the greatest work that Jesus done was on a hill called Calvary. The greatest work that Jesus did was on a hill called Calvary. Now, now, let's look at this right here. All of the other works he done, he helped. On Calvary, he was a part of. They, they, they took him and placed him on a cross. <laughs> they, they put nails in his hands. They put nails in his feet. Now, now that's not a good feeling. You're supposed to be enjoying what you help, but that wasn't an enjoyable feeling. They put nails again in his hands. You all might just think about that. They put nails in his feet. They put a crown of thorns on his head. Well, listen, they hung him high. They lifted him up, but what they didn't know that he said, if I be lifted up, that I'll draw all men into me. They pierced him in his side. He hung his head in the locks of his shoulder, and then my Savior died. Well, why did he do that? Because what he did on that cross was he freed us from sin. He paid the price of sin. No man that was on earth, no man that was in the earth could actually fulfill what Jesus did on that cross. You all, I, I will say this right here. If you don't know God, you need to get to know him. Because in these crazy times that we live in, we experience a lot of crazy things. In history, 2020 is going to be a major year for us because a pandemic came that actually ravaged everybody. It stopped you from working. It stopped you from actually being sociable. But a couple of things it did, it gave you time to get closer with it. If you never had the time or the opportunity to get closer with God, 2020 gave you that opportunity. So they let you know that it wasn't all bad thing that was going on in 2020. God gave us some time to get to know him. And it says, if you think that was bad, just wait for what's to come. Just wait what's to come. You all, we have to get this thing right. We have to get closer with God. And that requires our obedience and our participation in doing what God say do. We can't fix it our way because he's already placed the plan for us. We can't do any and everything because he's already created for his glory. If it don't lines up with what God said, it ain't right. There's no other way around it. If it does not line up with the will of God, it is not right. So my sisters and brothers, as we, we've heard this message, it, it was more than just a wine shortage. God is telling us there are going to be times when you run out. Amen. Worldly, but spiritually, I'm here to refill yeah. you. We have to turn to him and include him in our lives. God tells us what to do, but he's not going to depot his way in your life because he gave all of us a choice. Yeah. It's a choice that you make. If you choose to do wrong, that was asking you chose. He said choose to do right. And then you doing righteousness, you, you'll get my rewards and my true manifestation of my power. 
You all, that's my text. He, God saved the best for last. Amen. Thank you. Maybe someone here who is in need of salvation. Brothers and sisters, in times like these with racism and oppression and many questions unanswered, there is a need for the church. Jesus said, Upon this rock I build my church. The very gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Paul says in the church of Ephesus that God should give glory out of the church throughout all ages. We invite you to the church to share with us at Pioneer Missionary Baptist Church where we are reaching out to save the sinner, reaching up to glorify God, and reaching in to gather the saints.